Happy New Year. So, um, I, I wasn't planning to do a live, but um, I am proofing the manual. Yay! Uh, just changing some bits and pieces. And I'm just going over a really important page that, um, a double page spread that Angie and I came up with and Telmo and I are sort of pinning down. Hi, Kiara. So this double page spread, which sits next to each other, talks about whole arm movement. And at the top of it, I discuss terms to differentiate, for instance, finger movement, wrist movement, arm movement, muscular movement, shoulder movement, and hold arm, whole arm movement. Uh, all of these terms are really important for you to, to understand. I then explain a little bit about whole arm movement. Now, I've developed a, an adjustment to the standard whole arm movement technique that you see in books, which is actually quite a difficult technique to get uh, if you don't really know what you're doing. But one of the things that made me decide to do this, uh, this live is I'm just correcting this. And so I have three images here. And these three images look at the three main right-hander holds. And I thought it might be interesting to have a little conversation with you guys about how to how to hold a pen and how I hold a pen and why the hold that I've developed for a pen hold is different from how most people hold a pen. For, the, uh, for you left-handers out there, you have a whole page. Right-handers have half a page. So on the uh, whole arm movement left-hand page, I have uh, six variations of holds for left-handers. Now, this would be a lot easier if Alice was here, but unfortunately she isn't. So I am going to try and do this um, on my own to show you how this, these holds work. So you'll have to, to bear with me a little bit and be a little bit patient. Uh, the material in the manual is uh, Telmo is uh, locking down the pages as we as we go through them. Um, there's some great stuff. Hey, Francesco. Uh, right. So let's let's see how I'm going to do this. Um, right. So if I okay. I'm gonna lean the. I'm gonna lean the um, the camera there. Oh, sorry, this is just my little. Um... This is just my little camera stand, <laughs> so you're going to see that. But I'm not going to move it because if I move it, I'll have to put it back in place, which is a nightmare. All right. So now <clears throat> when I hold a pen, let me see if this will I wonder if uh, actually I'll get a I'll get a, 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 a metallic holder so it sort of shows up a little bit better. When I hold a pen, most people hold the, hold the pen here. So, let's see if we can, is that better? Get the glare off of it. So, uh, I'm just, because the, how is that? Oh, that looks all right. When I hold a pen, 
mo sorry, when most people hold a pen, they hold it here. Now, th this is how you hold a pen. This is not how you hold a pen. When you hold a pen like this, this is what happens. Now, I've looked at a lot of you do this on Instagram, and it, it shocks me when I see this. When you hold a pen, like this, most of you write like this. And so you're sort of pulling in on your, on your fingers. I wonder if I can get this a little bit bigger. Not on this side. Um, so you're sort of pulling in on your fingers to write the shape. So you're doing, you're pushing, look at the fingers, you're pushing out and then you're pulling in. Okay, so that is, that's four, so that's six millimeters. You, you can't write six, you can't write bigger than six millimeters doing this. You have to pull all the way in. So these, these lines are four millimeters apart. These are four, four millimeter X height. In order to get an O, you would have to go all the way up. Look, I'm pushing the whole, look, the fingers are moving out. Can you see that? And as they go out and around, they come down and in. So let's do this. So that is, that's, uh, that's eight millimeters in height. So what I found there, I don't really talk about this in the manual because there isn't space to discuss it. What I find there is when you get to the bottom turn of the, of the ellipse, when you get to the bottom turn of the ellipse, you don't have as much control over the tool because the hand is under so much tension. Now, I've been doing copper plate script for oh, about 30 years and um, I've changed my hold over a sort of 30 year period. And one of the things that my hand has become very sensitive to is tension. So um, I know some of you might know this, but I nearly lost the use of my thumb because of repetitive strain injury. Um, and it's only really because of practicing Reiki has it helped me to, to, to sort of stave this off. So I'm, I'm very conscious of you not getting in this position. When you hold a tool like this, the only way that you're writing is by creating tension Now, it's not as difficult to change your hold as you think it might be, but let's, let's sort of do one step at a time. Most, the best hold is a triagonal hold, where you have the hand, the, the pen staff, sitting nine, <laughs> not five, nine. <laughs> but thank you, that's very flattering. Uh, when you hold, so, so what I do is I hold the pen, rest it. The non-writing hand is really important. Never try to pick up the tool with the writing hand because the writing hand is a little bit busy. It's starting to prepare itself to write. So when you pick it up with this tool, you're sort of giving it a little bit more work. Give it less work and it'll work better. So you want to rest the pen there See this little curve just there? Now, one of the things I talk about in the manual on page 11 is, is something you have to also become quite conscious of. And that is, the parts. So, Chris York helped me with this. So these are the parts of the pen staff. Now, we call this a pen holder or the nib holder. Or... So a pen staff is a really beautiful word. And the pen staff has, it has uh, the foot, which is, 
sorry about all this moving around. I, I did, did not plan to do this. It has the foot, which is, uh, maybe it's best to do it with the silver one, which is this bit, there to there. Then it has the body, which is there. So sort of just where the curve starts, up into the curve, up and over, and then the tail. And the tail is sort of about there to the end. And some of them have a finial, right? So this finial um, finishes off the tool. Now, Chris has done, Chris Yoke has done an absolutely fantastic video on why a pen works the way it works. And he talks about balance and how the pen needs to sit properly and why it's weighted the way it is. So I'm, I'm not going to go into that. Now, knowing why Knowing the names of the, the parts of the, of the tool is really important because in the manual, and I was, I was just reading this and I thought, oh, and I thought, oh, what does this mean? So I say here on one of the holes, augmented uh, triangle, triangle hold held at foot of pen staff. Now, if you reference this, you will see that this is the foot here. So held at foot of penstaff is there. Um, so uh, let me just, just not mix up the pages that I'm working on. Tell them to hang me. So when you hold the tool like this, you're creating a lot of tension here. Unless you learn to hold it lightly. Now, the only way to hold it lightly is to hold it like this not like this. So by holding it lightly, you flatten the angle to the, you flatten the angle to the, to the page. When you do this, look, the angle changes, right? So I talk about this as well in the manual. So I want to talk about my hold. Most people hold the tool down here. When you hold the tool down here, Yes, Miriam, you and your vicious pen hold. <laughs> when you hold the tool here, you... Now, I want you to look at this. I know, I, I'm, I know I'm not zooming into this, but... When you hold the tool, the first thing that happens is you come down to the page because you want to see what you're writing. So you're, you're sort of there. You might as well be climbing on top of the table. When you hold the tool there, Look at what's happening. You have to push your hand down to the page because look at where the tool is. It's not touching the page. In order for it to touch the page, you have to take it down to the page, creating tension just here. So this, I know some of you have seen me do this. Uh, where is my brush? When I hold a brush, I hold it fairly high up. Now this is quite an unusual brush because it's, it's you know it's a really beautiful um, uh, Chinese brush. But you know there's a lot of, of bristle here. Maybe I shouldn't use this. One. I should use something you're much more accustomed to. When I hold the brush, right, a lot of you do this, a lot of you do this. When I hold the brush, I do this. And I also, so what I do is I, there's a whole set of images in the pictures in the manual about this. I take the brush with the non-writing hand and I place it into the writing hand and I move my fingers around it so the tool is being held in place by something else. You don't have to worry about the tool 
because you're sort of fiddling with the tool with the writing hand you can't get it in the right place and this hand's just some people put it on their leg some people scratch in their head you know i also put the the cap on because my hands are quite large so i i like a little bit of um of, of leverage on the back also you know i also make sure that the, the cap is facing the, the text <laughs> A little obsessive compulsive um, now I don't hold it here I hold it higher up because by holding it higher up the wrist creates the pressure so look at the wrist the wrist look at the wrist and look at the tip of the brush so we have one and two and three and so that's, that's the brush hold I developed. Now, consequently, that brush hold allows you to do really beautiful swells. That brush hold can help you move from this, because you have to do this, and tilt. And by tilting, you have to tuck the fingers under. And I think you sort of trick your mind into believing that you're doing something else, because you know it's like oh, I know this uh, you know if you have pain in the middle of your palm that is a real problem that is a big 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 issue one of the things you might want to try is um, get some Epsom salts and some uh, lukewarm water and just soak your hand in the Epsom salts and lukewarm water it'll really help to, 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 to break up the, the, the soreness in the middle of the hand but if you are if you are suffering, you, you need to change that hold. So, by holding the tool upright, so remember the brush was I held the brush like this. So I'm holding the pen. The pen is completely vertical, right? I'm going to tilt it just a little bit so it is about. Turn off to the side here. It is at that angle. So it's about 75 degrees. So at 75 degrees, it's quite steep, a much steeper than most of you will ever. Um, do I use your hold? I get a bit, I get a bit, f I get a bit. I get a fair bit of tension in the but that's because you're squeezing too much but only at the swells could you talk about the exact part of the... hmm uh, let, let me finish this first um, copy that and paste it on a little bit later and I'll I'll, I'll look at it again <laughs> the battery might run out I just want to run through my hold first uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll finish up with my hold today and then tomorrow I will come back on and I will go through something I'll I'll take some questions and um, that way I can sort of get through what, what I wanted to to talk to you about so with my hold I hold the tool higher up and I let I let the wrist do the movement now, look at this you do this I, I, I don't do that. I don't use my fingers to write. I only use my fingers to add a little bit of pressure. So I do this. Can you see my wrist making the movement? Now the reason why I don't write with my fingers is your fingers are busy. They're holding the tool. You give them something else to do. So not only do you want them to hold the tool, you want them to apply pressure and you want them to write. So at some point, one or two or all of the three things will fail. So what I do is, uh, you know, Sarah, you can apply this to any, any kind of lettering, any traditional script, any modern script. You know, if I'm doing modern calligraphy, again,
Notice my, my whole arm is moved, my whole hand is moving. So if you're doing copper plate script, obviously you can do And that's why my curves are so smooth, because by using the wrist and not the fingers, you have a, a, a muscle, a muscle group um, that is bigger, that allows for a smoother movement rather than pushing the fingers right the way through it. Uh, now, I know you're sort of thinking, oh yeah, but you're writing quite big. Well, when you're writing small, it's the same thing. That's, what, that's why whole arm movement is so important. You see me write on glass, massive pieces of glass. I use the same movement for those big things as I do for really tiny bits of work. So if I'm writing, so this is going to be at about uh, two millimeters in height. So it's it's the same principle, you know, and, and, and when you cultivate that, it becomes much much more uh, much easier to do this. Now we have a, a spread in the manual just before the brush copper plate section that is really technical, and there are nine images that go through how the how the how to acquire this this brush hold. When I teach copper plate script, those of you who studied with me, what I tend to do is I um, I always start my students off with a brush because what I want is I want you to move away from this or this or that. So by teaching this new brush hole that I've developed, it helps you to be able to do this so we can do this now watch this lift don't forget to find the major my hand has not moved right it's the same hold I'm just dipping And at that height, what happens is it's easier to roll from the 55. Look at the pen. Look at the pen. From the 55, roll, turn, tilt through the horizontal. Because you're not rolling in a tight space. You have room to roll. Uh, so... Um, I'm just going to finish off by doing a little bit of writing, so I'm going to swap this round. Um, this is not in the best place for this. I talk about paper in the in the manual. I'm not quite ready to discuss paper with you guys because I am working on a uh, on on something very special um, and just testing some paper. Um, right here we go. So from this hold, we can get. And again, you know, I'm, I'm using that muscular movement to create these ovals, these ellipses. So 
sorry, I'm just off the desk. So let's let's just do this again. And one and two. So notice I can swap between this whole arm movement and a yay yay <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. So uh for such a uh, sorry about the really long live feed. I hope that helps. Um, tomorrow, I will try and find some time to come on. I can't really tell you when because, you know, I'm going through this manual. Um, and I will take some more specific questions, which are copper plate based. I know I saw something earlier about Spencerian. Um, I don't really want to talk about Spencerian just yet. I just want to get through this copper plate manual and get it out there. And once it's out, then I can start tackling some other uh, more complex uh, holds all right so um remember don't squeeze the tool too hard if you are in pain at all you must stop writing massage your hand put it into some lukewarm water just get that tension out of the hand uh, the manual also has something that shows um how to uh, not squeeze the tool so hard so there's a little tip that Gaynor taught me um, years and years and years and years ago, like 20 years ago, which, which she didn't teach me because I had a difficult uh, handhold. But, uh, you know, it was it was quite interesting to see how she dealt with it with other people. All right. So Happy New Year. Um, the manual will be out in mid-March. Uh, for those of you who live in uh, Europe or happy to travel or in London, uh, don't forget to email the studio at pascribe.com just go onto my feed and look back a couple of days and you'll see the email address um i, I haven't updated it on the on the uh, top of the profile because i've just been so busy um i am setting up some classes in the studio they're sort of between four to six people um they're not going to be large classes um and they are going to be quite intense classes so there'll be some evening classes and some daytime classes if people have time during the day a few weekend classes, but not many, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm away quite a lot. And um, also some uh, individual classes, um, which are obviously priced very differently. Um, and uh, I can, I, I'll, I'll have all this information ready by the end of uh, next week uh, to send out. So just send an email to the studio at pscribe.com and I will add you to the list and I'll send information on. Or, oh, sorry, I probably covered the mic. Uh, just send some information to the studio and I'll, I'll add you to the list and um, have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.